Welcome to Shawnee Union back-to-back -back video, so um, I'm pretty excited about that. I hope you're excited about that too. This is where we're going to talk about the Leica 2F. So um, I was looking to get one of these LTM Leicas or Leica thread mount um, cameras. They're older than the Leica M mounts and they're pretty important historically. So if you think about um, Andre Cartier-Bresson, who's probably the most um, famous Leica shooter, probably the most famous photographer of all time. Um, when he was shooting and taking all of his great images, he's probably using something closer to this than a Leica M. A Leica M came out in the 1950s, and they're, now we consider them the quintessential Leica, but um, during his time, and for a lot of photographers before the 1950s, they were probably using something like this. So um, they're pretty cheap to get in terms of the bodies. The bodies can go anywhere to, to you know, 100 for a, one with issues up to 300. And the lenses, um, LTM lenses, also pretty cheap. So LTM, you can get, lastly, we talked about Japanese ones, you can get genuine Leica ones from 200 up to $500. So I kind of wanted to try one out. I saw this body and lens combo for sale, um, and it was about $300 for both. So a little bit more than that for the lens and body. Picked it up, made a super low ball offer. The guy accepted, and I have it in front of me. A little bit about the camera, pretty smooth in its operation, uh, designed really well and really small. Um, the LTM means that it's a thread mount, so it's a screw-on type lens. There's also, also, there's also other manufacturers that made lenses for this too. You, there's some Russian ones that are not compatible, there's some uh, Japanese ones that are compatible, and then there's um, the German ones, the Leica ones that are totally compatible as well. Um, some interesting design quirks, there's no actual lever to advance the film, it's just a little, um, this little knob at the top, and then um, after you advance it, then you set your shutter speed. So you can't set it before; you have to set it after you advance. Pretty quiet too for a rangefinder. And then we're talking about the rangefinder. This is something that a lot of people have issues with, and a lot of people told me to be, um, or a lot of people warned me about before I bought it. The viewfinder and the rangefinder are split. So they're two really small um, windows and they're pretty darn small. So when you're thinking about the Leica M2 or even the Canon P, those are both combined. So your viewfinder and your rangefinder are in the same window. On these ones, they're gonna be split. Some people have issues shooting with it because it's so small and because you have to switch between both. I don't have too much of an issue with it. I think if you're shooting um, using hyperfocal distance, you're probably not going to use the rangefinder that much. You're just going to use the viewfinder. The rangefinder window is a little bit small, but the viewfinder window is pretty big. So um, I thought I was a little bit worried about it, but in use, it didn't. It wasn't too much of an issue. It was pretty natural after shooting with it. And then lastly, the rewind lever, um, kind of just a simple knob right here. You pull it up and then you rewind it to the left. So pretty simple in design and uh, use. One of the annoying things about the camera is that when you load film into it, you have to cut it um, kind of a little bit thinner and you like lose one or two frames. So this is actually, and this is some crazy like a stuff, um, you can get a metal film kind of guide and it's like a hundred bucks uh, to buy this metal film guide. I'll put a link on it, but I can't believe people pay that price. I think people are 3D printing them now, but the original metal one, um, some people are paying like a hundred dollars for that. It's just pretty much like a, little guy that shows you how to cut it. I cut it with scissors and that's one issue that I have if I'm going to go away for a trip. Either I have to cut my film all before or during the trip. Um, if I'm traveling in state or somewhere local where I can bring scissors, that's okay. But if I'm traveling somewhere like, you know, when I went to Baltimore, I didn't bring this camera because of that one reason, um, even though it's a great camera and it really does fit into your pocket. One last thing, and this is just kind of like weird Leica stuff. The Leica 2F, you could upgrade it to um, the Leica 3F. So the difference between the 2 and the 3 is you get the slow shutter speed settings here. Do I think you need them? Probably don't. It already goes down to 25 uh, or 1 over 120, uh, 1 over 25th of a second. So if you're going that slow, if you're going 1 to 15, I don't know how many situations you're going to need to be able to shoot that low. Um, so I don't think it's a huge deal having a 2F. Also on the top of this one, you're gonna see that it has a red dial. The red dial doesn't do anything special to the camera. I think it's just a little bit more collectible. So how did the pictures come out? 
the lens is a 50 millimeter f3.5 collapsible, so that's the way it can be so portable and it can be so light. Um, the one issue is it starts at 3.5, so you're not going to have that ability to go down to f2 if you need to. Um, I was shooting in normal daylight and shooting outside, so 3.5 is fine enough for that. Um, you can lower your shutter speed a little bit, get an extra stop there. And the pictures came out pretty sharp. I don't think you would, I, don't, I wouldn't say that it's um, much less sharp than modern lenses or much different than, mod, than um, newer lenses. It just kind of has a specific vintage look and it's a pretty nice look. So um, I think you could, if you're able to sh take great pictures with a modern camera, you're able to take pictures with this camera and vice versa. So in the end, what I recommend anyone get the Leica 2F. I think it's not a great starter camera. So if you're looking just to get a Leica, um, and you haven't shot film, this is going to be super annoying and super difficult to shoot with. If you are someone who are really used to rangefinders and you want a different experience and you can live with some of those quirks like a split viewfinder and rangefinder, you can live with cutting your film and you can kind of live with just, a, just some of these, you know, shutting the shutter, shutter speed after you wind the film, then this is going to be a pretty fun camera. I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep it just because it's um, interesting and it's so portable and convenient. Um, it's not going to be the first camera I reach for, probably not the second camera I reach for, but if I'm just running out of the house and I've cut the film and I've remembered to do everything, it's definitely going to be um, something that's pretty fun. So it's one of those cameras that once you start shooting with it, it is really a different experience and really something that feels totally natural. So the, that's why I think a lot of people are drawn to these cameras. Even though they're quirky, um, they're fully developed. Like there's no holes. Like um, using it, you feel like you're using something that isn't like a beta version, but it's been thought through and it um, has been like field tested. So everything just feels right. It's pretty smooth. It's pretty accurate, and it's it kind of shows how Leica progressed. You know, like these are like 70, almost 70 year old cameras, and they're holding up. Um, I'm pretty sure this one may have not even ever been serviced and it works perfectly fine. So when you're talking about something like that, um, it's pretty incredible and pretty cool how like it can, can make cameras like that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys um, got more information about the Leica 2F and the Leica 3F. If you have any questions about the screw mount Leicas or any cameras like this, let me know. And hopefully I will do another video next week, which will be three for three, which has been a very long time since I've done three for three. But um, Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. Oh, and I forgot. I'm going to put a link uh, to eBay if you want to buy one of these cameras. Um, if you like this video and you want to support the channel, going through those links really helps out. Um, usually when you guys buy stuff, I just buy film cameras and other stuff. So um, buy film too. So um, greatly appreciate it when you guys buy stuff through those links. All right. Thank you guys. Bye. Now I can really disappear. You're there, guys.